Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is module seven of the course, Machine Learning for Managers. And we have already covered six module of this course. So if you haven't watched those videos, please do check it out. Also, I'll put the link in the description box. In the last module, we have discussed one of the most popular machine learning algorithm that is logistic regression. In this module, we will discuss about one more classification algorithm that is decision trees. So for the viewers who are new to this channel, Techno Managers is an online community which is helping working professionals to grow in their career. Here you can find courses related to business management technology. So if you are someone who is looking to get knowledge about product strategy, business strategy, management technology, we have gotten you covered. So please subscribe to our channel if you want to grow professionally. Techno Managers also provides services for mock interview, resume review, or if you want to understand any technical or product management related concept, or if you want to learn about system design for product manager, you can book a slot with me on TopMeet. So with this, moving on to module seven. So what we will learn in this module? In this module, we will learn about one more classification algorithm that is decision trees. We will see what decision trees are, how to create decision tree. After creating decision tree, how to interpret a decision tree. Then we will move on to identifying some of the problems in the decision trees like overfitting and how do we solve them via ensembling model. So we'll touch upon random forest and bagging. At last, we'll see some of the advantages and the disadvantages of the decision trees. So with this, let's get started. So what is a decision tree? Decision tree is basically an algorithm to solve classification problem in which we ask series of questions to get the final prediction. But why it is called a tree? Because we ask questions, its structure becomes like a tree in which the leaf node tells you the classification results. So if you're not able to get this, let's understand this with the help of an example. This is a table which represents the characteristics or attributes of animal like color, number of limbs, whether animal has horns or not. Based on this, let's assume we want to create a classification model which can classify animal into cat, lizard, cow, parrots, depending on the attributes. So how will we go about it? We will ask a question whether the animal has horns or not. If it has horns, then it will be a cow because from the data, and from the table, we can see that only one animal has horns. Then if animal doesn't has horns, then we go and asking if what are the number of limbs animal has. So it, if it is two, then it will be a parrot. If the number of limbs are four, then we will go on and asking one more question depending upon their color. So that is how we create a decision tree. And these are the leaf nodes. These are the leaf nodes which actually tells what the final prediction is. So this is how the decision tree looked like. Now the next question you would have in mind is how did we build this tree? Why did we ask the question related to the horns, but not the color or other attribute? Why, why not number of limbs? Why horns, but not color at the top? So this is the like basic question which you will have in mind. So what we do is like we use an objective function. The goal of this is to get the most efficient tree. So we choose the attribute in such an order that decision tree can cover the entire data in minimum number of sp splits. So what we do is like we use an objective function that is information gain. Maximization of this objective function is tied to our goal of the efficient tree. So if you maximize this objective function, our goal of the efficient tree will automatically reach. Next question is how does this objective function looks like? So the objective function is defined as the entropy of the parent node minus the average entropy of the child nodes. So at each step, we calculate the objective function using different split and see which split is maximizing it and use that splitting attribute. So what we do is like while creating this decision tree at the very first step, we use different attributes like horns, number of limbs and color and create the first step of the tree. Then we calculate this objective function of the information game. So how we do is like we calculate the average entropy of horns and we subtract the average entropy of these child nodes. And we do this for all the attributes like horns, number of limbs and color. 
and see which attribute is giving the maximum information gain so in this case the horns might be giving the maximum information gain that that's why we choose it at the very first likewise at every step we use this and get the complete tree built now once we have the data we have designed the decision tree now how do we use this tree how do we get the prediction so there can be two different type of tree like decision trees and regression tree decision trees we have already seen in the animal example because they are the classification output was categorical and in case the regression tree the classification is the numerical variable in both the cases the output is decided by the leaf node so if you want to do prediction on the new data what you do is you map it to the tree and see where it is falling in the tree which leaf node it is falling that is your predicted class in case of the regression tree we might have to do some kind of computation in terms of average median mean etc to get the final prediction till now we have understood what are decision trees how to build decision trees and get the prediction but now we will see how to overcome the problem of overfitting in the decision trees this is one of the very common problem which we face while building decision trees as well like any other machine learning problem the problem of overfitting and underfitting is closely tied up to the height of the tree if the height of the tree is too much then it will cause overfitting and shallow tree will cause the problem of underfitting please think about it very carefully and let me know the reasoning in the comment section if you want me to explain this point in great detail i'll explain then and there only so the problem of the overfitting in the decision tree can be caused by various reason one can be noise in the data second can be lack of representative labeling from the data these are two primary source of the overfitting in the decision trees now let's see how to overcome the overfitting in the decision tree so the popular strategy of overcome the problem of overfitting in is the ensemble models the goal of ensembling is to combine multiple models to create a meta model which can better generalize the result on the new data how can we combine multiple models there can be various aggregate function like average median or maybe some of the complex functions so how do we create ensemble model for decision trees so it started with splitting your data into mul multiple data sets then get the decision tree classification for each of these data sets then we generate the prediction from each of these decision tree then combine them using some aggregate function like weighted average median mode etc to get the final prediction this is how the ensemble model works so one of the most common method to build ensemble models is bagging which is actually bootstrap plus aggregation so bootstrap is basically getting the data sample with replacement this process is known as sampling with replacement you might have already studied in plus 2 or in undergrad so what we do is like we get the samples from the data to train the model and replace it back so we can get the same observation in the sample because we continue to replace it back random forest is a type of bagging model where the aggregate function where the aggregate function is the average function so what are the step the steps of getting the random forest is is stated here so what we do is like we fix the sample size then we select the observation from the data of the selected size each time we train the model and replace it back that is sampling with replacement since the model is trained on the roughly independent sample the output can be assumed to be independent that is by the variance reduce and the problem of overfitting also reduces so all in all random forest is a type of bootstrap aggregating model So last we can discuss about why to use decision trees in the classification problem there are several advantages of using decision tree for classification problem as algorithm have their own shortcomings as well likewise there are disadvantages of using decision trees also so let's first discuss about the advantages of the decision tree so like you have already seen how easy it is to comprehend the decision tree they are very interpretable also decision trees don't require much of effort in terms of data processing these pre processing can be of different type including data normalization scaling of the data and missing values also don't adversely affect the decision tree building process 
these are the reason why decision trees are used for classification problem there are some disadvantages as well sometimes the calculation of the decision tree can be very complex and the time consuming also the small changes in the data can drastically changes the structure of the tree these are some of the disadvantages with this we have come to the end of the decision tree by this you have conceptual understanding of why what is decision tree and how do we use them in the next module we will discuss about one more machine learning algorithm that is clustering till then subscribe to our channel